Not everyone is going to be successful on Etsy. And there are certain personality traits and habits that can highly determine if you are going to be one of those owners with a thriving Etsy business or a not so thriving Etsy business. And hopefully after watching today's video, if you are very committed to making sure your store works, if you are watching through these and you determine any of these qualities in yourself or things that you are missing, then perhaps you can work to overcome them so that you can set yourself on a path towards having a successful Etsy store. But if you do not know me yet, my name is Christina. I am a full-time print-on-demand seller, sharing Etsy tips and print-on-demand tips that I know with you guys. So if you are curious about these traits so that you can identify them within yourself, then let's get started. The first trait of someone who is not gonna be successful on Etsy are those who do not put in real effort. I get so many comments on my store saying, my Etsy store gets no sales, this does not work. And I ask them, how much much effort did you put in? And they say they put in tons of effort. I go into their store, they never added new photos, they never learned SEO, they never did their descriptions. There's just so many things missing that I obviously can pinpoint right away that they did not put in any actual effort, but they will fight you to the tooth and nail, arguing that they put in their maximum effort into their store. To have a successful store, you need to put in the hard work. You need to have a good banner, you need to have good branding, you need good listings, you need amazing listing photos, you need helpful descriptions. So many parts play into if someone is going to trust you enough to purchase from you. And if you aren't putting in real effort into learning how to get found, or how to make people purchase from you, then your store is not gonna be successful. People seem to think that with Etsy, within a few hours, they can have a full shop up and start making sales. But if you look at any other business model out there, you'll know that this is not true and it is not true for Etsy. And that actually leads me into my second point. People who are not going to be successful on Etsy are the ones who believe that this is a get rich quick scheme. Hint, hint, it is not. I have put thousands of hours into my Etsy store. When I first started, I had to put in hundreds of hours without seeing any results early on because that's how businesses work. A lot of the time, it's not like your corporate job where you are trading an hour for $25. You are putting a lot of upfront unpaid work for hopes of payoff in the future. But yet on Etsy, for some reason, so many people go into it thinking that they're going to see results super quick as long as they listed a few products. So I'll see people who posted five products and then they'll message me saying they're not getting any views or any sales. The problem is they were going into this thinking they could just put in a few hours of work and see results. They're not willing to put in the upfront work that a business is going to need to be able to be successful. To be honest, you might have to put in quite a bit of work and you might not get a sale your first month. You might not get a sale your second month. In fact, you might not get a sale on your third month. It took me five weeks to get my first sale and it took quite a few months for me to be able to start getting consistent sales. And that was a lot of upfront work, which at the time was not paying off. But now, because I put in so much work that has compounded over time and my listings have gained more and more momentum, those upfront early works have really started paying off. But again, it was exactly that, a lot of work. The third type of person that is gonna be unsuccessful on Etsy is the one that thinks they know best, so therefore they never study their competitors. I have done a few audits before where I have let the person know that their designs are probably just not going to sell on t-shirts. They're just not what their niche is or what their people probably want on t-shirts. I've never seen a t-shirt like that. And I can tell they've never done any competitor research and they don't wanna listen because they like that design. Unfortunately, if they like that design, that does not mean the general public is gonna purchase from you. You need to be studying your competitors and seeing what they're doing already that is getting people to purchase from them. When I first started my store, I did no research. I had no clue what was selling for other people. So I was just putting random designs up and hoping that they would sell. But once I learned how to research competitors and try to implement some of the strategies they, they were using without copying, I am not saying copy any of your competitors, but take a look at what type of fonts they're using. What placement on the shirt or product is doing best for them? What photos are selling really well for them? If you don't understand or can't see or spot a good design or a good listing in someone else, then how are you able to implement that in your own store? Answer is you're not gonna be able to. And research does not need to be hard. I actually just released a video last week on how you can do free Etsy research on your competitors without having to pay for tools. I do love to use tools like Everbee to speed up my research process 
now, but as a new seller, you don't need to be paying for all those tools. You can upgrade once you start making sales. So it's just a further investment in your store. But this is not even just applicable to Etsy. It's applicable everywhere for any business you want to do. If I want to create a good YouTube video, I need to be watching good YouTube videos. I need to be studying what thumbnails they're using. I need to be studying their titles and grab inspiration from people who are already successful and not try to build this up with a guessing game. Follow what's working and be inspired by it without copying it. Another characteristic of a store that is probably not going to make it is one that does zero testing. They've already picked their niche. They've already picked their product. They've already picked their design style without ever testing. When I first started my store, I did hundreds of different niches. And then I waited to see which ones were getting traffic and which ones were actually purchasing. And then from there, I started deciding which niches I wanted to further design in. So I'd make a few for multiple different niches, see what works, and then if one worked, then that week I would spend that whole week creating new designs within that niche. But if I had gone into my store thinking I only want to create positivity shirts, then I might have an issue of perhaps no one right now is buying or perhaps there is just way too much competition already in that niche. By testing, you are able to throw out a bunch of things, see what sticks, and then whatever is sticking, you go after it. The more you test, the more sales you're gonna get and the more you can refine your store. You should also be duplicating your listings to figure out which mock-ups or which photos are actually selling for you. If you've decided, I want this one photo to be my main photo, which on Etsy, your main photo is the main thing that people look at to decide if they're gonna click and purchase from you or not. But if your main photo was a white shirt and they already knew in their heart, they don't want a white shirt, but they have no clue you had other colors in your design, or maybe they just hated that mock-up. Maybe that main photo sucked but maybe they really liked your second photo, but they would never know. So what I like to do is I like to test my main photo by doing multiple listings of the exact same product, but changing out the main photo. And if you're unsure on your titles and tags, AKA your SEO, you can also duplicate and test two blocks of SEO against each other to see which listing gets more traction. The failed Etsy store also only listed five products at the beginning of the month and then never touched their store again. Maybe they even put a hundred products up all in one day, but then they never touch their store again. Etsy rewards consistency. The more consistent you are, the more products you'll get up, the more Etsy will reward you. And then similar to our last point, if you just put up 100 listings and then never touch your store again, you are never refining based on data. After getting some listings up, you're gonna have data and that's how you should move your store forward. But if you just put up a bunch of listings and expect those to sell for years, it's not going to happen. You need to be growing. With each listing, you're slowly gonna be getting better. So each week your store is going to be getting better and better and better. Etsy is seeing that you are active. So they're going to reward you by showing you more and more. And this is going to help your store grow. My next point might be a little confusing, but let me explain. The failed Etsy store is copying what everyone else is doing. Yes, I told you, you need to be studying your other competitors, but that does not mean that you are taking their niches, that you are taking their designs, that you are copying their titles and tags. You're grabbing inspiration from those to learn what a good listing looks like and applying it to your own designs. If you're copying them exactly or trying to compete with them directly, but they already have thousands of sales, as a new seller, you are not gonna be winning. People do not trust your store yet, so you wanna be in niches using designs that maybe not everybody has done yet. And if you need some inspiration on this, on how to create new niches to compete with your competitors, I have a video on how to do that here. And then my last trait of the unsuccessful Etsy seller is the one who is not in love with the process. I love designing for my products. I love the Etsy listing process. I love the Etsy platform. It isn't a burden for me to go work on my store. In fact, I'll do it on my free times when I'm watching TV, when I'm outside. I love to work on my store. I've actually had past Etsy stores that I worked on that I actually just did not like and I ended up shutting them down because they actually did make sales but I just did not enjoy the process at all and it was draining me. If you do not love what you are doing, you're gonna either give up before it's successful or it's gonna get successful and you're just gonna hate your life which you absolutely do not want and I do not wish that upon you. So yes, the beginning may be hard but you can still find out if you enjoy the process by just starting. But within a month or two, you probably know if you dread working on your store or if it's something that brings you excitement. Not getting sales may 
be a demotivator, but just think about the process. If you love the process, you're able to put in the time and the commitment and the consistency to keep working on it for a few months, I guarantee it's going to work out. If you've started Etsy, you're not seeing results, but you're listening to this and you're identifying with some of these traits, perhaps think if Etsy is really the route that you wanna go. And if it is, how can you overcome some of these traits so that you can be on the right path to having a successful store? Whether you think you need more commitment, you need more patience, you need to put a little bit more effort into your listings, or if you just really need to ask yourself if this is something that you enjoy. I really hope that you guys found this video helpful. If you did, if you could please drop a like and subscribe, that would help me so much. Thank you guys so much and I'll see you next week.